my thoughts are mixed because they put Saakashvili in Odessa. Odessa is one of the most criminal places on the planet. It's known as the pearl of organized crime. So taking somebody who is, is emotional and had a very good working relationship with Americans and was able to do stuff in Georgia, putting him in Odessa was very uh, ambitious. And I think that his personality and his approach was a little bit rough in regard to the established institution, the institutions. Uh, you can't just come into Odessa and say, all of you are criminals and all of you are going to pay. And I think that he created with this very um, uh, cowboy-like behavior a lot of enemies very early on. Uh, and that having been said, um, I think it's kind of sad to see him go. And I'm happy that he that he resigned in such a vociferous manner. I mean, he has, he has guts for saying what he said. No, he's not alone. I, I, I mean, we have Moscow in Zakarpacho who's doing his best, and he did his best in Luhansk, and before then, under Yushchenko, he was in Crimea, so at least there's one that, that we can name. But you said something really important, that he was the loudest. And one of the things that is missing in Ukraine majorly is professional strategic communication that is backed by strategic deeds that are aimed towards the achievement of a set goal. And to an extent, Saakashvili, he did a lot of talking, a lot of conferences, a lot of, yeah, 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 and this is bad, and this is bad, and this is bad. At the end of the day, people who are from the Odessa region would confide in me and say, well, he's not doing anything. He's talking and it's all PR. And if he had been doing something, then there was something wrong on the strategic communication part that Ukraine didn't hear. They didn't see the changes. And um, it's sad to see. And I'm very curious to see if he's going to have another political party in Ukraine. Corruption or taking bribes to speed things up is um, something that we call licensing or extra uh, fees that you have to pay to expedite things in, in countries where there's a sort of rule of law. And when you pay licenses in Canada or in the Netherlands or in Spain to, to expedite your shipments or to have certain products come in uh, or to even build buildings, you pay the license, which is kind of like you pay a bribe here. And because the system is so corrupt and broken in Ukraine, the money funnels down to, not to the budget from the bribe, but it does funnel down to uh, people that are working in that organization, albeit a governmental institution or a criminal organization that is associated or, or facilitating the work of a governmental institution. So there are no licenses here, per se. The licenses are called bribes. And this is a, a, a sort of reform that is a long time coming. And at the same time, uh, when you ask me about the trade uh, relations between North, let's say North America and Europe and, and Ukraine, corruption has always been a factor in dealing with post-Soviet states. And this is an issue that we're seeing now when we're dealing with reforms. It's not only the corruption on the Ukrainian side, there is a level of corruption that Western partners have become accustomed to because those are the rules of the game if you wanted to play with Ukraine. And those businesses that have participated, those businesses and states that have participated in that um, corruptive culture, post-Soviet culture, they're also not the, the keenest ones on having this exposed because then the populace may not be so happy in their own countries. So corruption is a very, very seedy thing, and a part of it has been legalized in, in, in democratic countries, and it's a part of culture. It's a culture in, in Ukraine. Its coverage in Ukraine has been minimal. I mean, if, for somebody, if you see, like, really shooting uh, headlines, yeah, there are articles on every site, but really in-depth or, or good coverage on Internet sites uh, has been has been minimal, and 
whether his resignation is going to be a drop in the bucket, if, if I can, he's brave enough to name so many names that uh, either it is a fantastic PR stunt for his next political party, uh, or he has to get out of this country because imagine naming and saying what he said, where he's actually verbally, again, verbally targeting the establishment that was instituted by the Communist Party at the collapse of the Soviet Union in Ukraine. What Saakashvili said about the structures, in my experience, um, the formal structures in Ukraine, or the informal structures, sorry, they kind of remain the same. I don't see very many positive changes here, except maybe new shops and coffee places and a lot of nice little restaurants opening up, uh, which amazes me, all things considered. The most attention in the last few days has been paid to this e declaration and how much cash, because you're asking about corruption and uh, the, the number of, the amount of cash that uh, deputies, public servants have. And hearing, I was just listening to an interview by Roman Skripin with uh, Ruslan Dimchak, who declared something like $5.5 million cash in his house. And... When we look at this, yes, on the one way, on the one hand, it's great to have these e-declarations and hearing how uh, certain deputies have uh, remains or moshchi, so the the holy remains of saints in their house, which are priceless. It exposes, it creates transparency to an extent. Uh, However, that having been said, it's also protecting them. There's a system in it that says, yes, we have this much money and we can be protected by for our um, for our misdeeds. And very little has been asked about their offshore bank accounts. So we know maybe they have $5.5 million in, in something that is as big as a sofa. He, he himself said, oh, the amount of money fits into something like this sofa. And it weighs 300, in Hrivni, it weighs 350 kilos. So we have this, and it's going to show. But really, guys, are you really going to be keeping five million or, or two million in in your house? So it's a great interview. Um, it's bringing out transparency. It's br- at the, that having been said, it's bringing truth to the forefront. While the Ukrainian people, the the level of frustration is just simmering. It's it's, it's at a very sensitive simmering point at this point.